Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Before we get started, we want to let everybody know that uh, Brother Jr. he did come home this morning. Somebody they did release him. Uh, ask Spencer, does he, I know he can't hear me, but ask him, did he know that he was in the hospital? Yeah. Yeah. Him, yeah, Vanessa he told me. this morning. Vanessa told me she saw it on Facebook. Okay. All right, and one more. What about Keith? Keith. Keith is at home, too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. And and when I feel real bad and I've gone as far as I can go, uh, the doctor is the next stop. But then as soon as I get, go to the doctor and, and they see me and they do what they can do, I'm ready to go back home immediately. I can get better faster at home, I think. Well, everybody can. It's just more comfortable. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear that they're both out of the hospital with, and back at home. Uh, and, and we'll open up with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Uh, we thank you for the sanctuary that you provide for us, Lord, to come into. And we just thank you so much, Lord, for your precious words that we're going to read this morning. We pray that you bless the reading of them this morning, Lord. And we'll be thanking you now for the, the answer prayers that uh, our pastor is out of the hospital and we pray that the healing has already occurred, and and uh, we just pray that uh, you clear a path for him and his health, and and lift up his family, and just get them through this time, Lord. Uh, be with Brother Keith, uh, whatever's troubling him, Lord, you know, and and touch him, Lord, and help him and heal him and get him back with us. Uh, everything you do, Lord, we'll give you the honor and the glory and the praise for it and it's in your precious name Jesus that we pray amen uh, we left off in Luke chapter 8 uh, verse we're going to start to pick up at verse 26 uh, and sister Susan said the cat looked like outside looked like it was possessed well here you go and, and anytime you see somebody acting crazy they really might be possessed y'all when you see these things on the news and you go, how in the world? Who would have thought of that? Why did they do that? That don't make no sense. To a devil it does. And to somebody that goes to church, it really don't. Because we're trying to see and do things like the Lord. And it's just the opposite of what you, what you hear in here and what you read in, in your Bible. Them demons and them devils are going to make people do just the opposite. They ain't never going to go along with what we say. They're going to go the other way every time. Uh, all right, this is Luke chapter 8, verses 26. And I think this is 26 through 40. And they arrived at the country of Gavranese, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land... There met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Uh, this is a man that's, we would call him crazy. Uh, we would say he was homeless. Uh, this man is living in the cemetery. Now I got news for you, that is unnatural, that is unhealthy. That's, you're, you have a bad mental state if that's where you choose to spend your time and call it. That's where that's where you stay. That's not a place you stay when you're still among the living. All those things are bad. Uh, he said he didn't have no clothes on. Some of the craziest people you'll see now are trying to wear as little as they can get away with. Just as little as... Some of them now don't wear nothing. They had a, 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 it was Gay Pride Month last month, a couple months ago, whenever it was. And they had a parade. These guys down the street, nothing on them. Broad daylight. Policemen see them. Nobody gets locked up. What kind of, what kind of society are we living in? That's a sign of hedonism. That's a sign of, uh, uh, 
totally going against what it says in here. Um, verse 28. So this is God not even in his right mind, and this makes me feel bad. Uh, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. With a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Uh, this guy was out of his mind. We would call him crazy. But as soon as he was in the presence of the Lord, boy, he knew it. He knew Jesus. He knew who he was. He called him Son of God, Most High. He knew he, who he was dealing with. None of those, none of those sane people did. None of those other people around, they didn't know that that was really God Almighty standing there. They didn't know that yet, but this guy did because the devil does. He knows him. He believes in him. He don't doubt in him at all. He's the one that made the devil, and the devil knows that, and he's the one that threw the devil out of heaven. He knows that too. He knows all that. He's the one that the devil is going against. He's his adversary, so he knows him well. He how can you fight something you don't believe in? He believes in him more than most Christians do. He believes these words more than most Christians do. The devil knows the Lord, and it's clear every time one of these guys runs into Jesus, buddy, they're scared. They know that there's a day coming where they're going to get punished for all these bad things they've been making people do. And they're hoping when they run into him, oh, Lord, he finished out. I beseech thee, torment me not. Don't get me today, Lord. Today ain't the day, is it? Because they're just like us. They don't know the time and the hour he's coming back either. They don't know when he's coming back. But they know one day he's coming. And they know one day he's going to get them. Uh, smarter than me again. Before I got saved. I didn't recognize Jesus as Lord. All right, so that old demon is so crazy and out of it, he's living in the cemetery. He's smarter than I was. Guy running around naked. Kind of puts you on down in the basement a little bit there. <coughs> Uh, verse 29 for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he broke the bands and he was driven of the devil into the wilderness and Jesus asked him saying what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him uh, Paul tells a story about a man who cleans his house out and invites Jesus to come in. And he's got him a nice, clean house with him and Jesus. And then he runs Jesus off. And then seven devils worse than the one that Jesus run out come in and live with him. Maybe that's a case that this man went through. Maybe he had a devil. Jesus run it off. And he hung with Jesus for a little while. And then he put Jesus down. And then the seven came. And then maybe he, put, he got Jesus and dropped him again, and now there's a legion. I think in the Roman army, a legion was either 500 or 1,000 men. Y'all know? I want to say 1,000. That's a lot of troops right there. That's a lot of bad. I, you know, I can just see uh, all these crazy things that we see today being done by one demon and one person. Imagine if you got a bunch of them in there picking at you 24-7. Going and do this, going and do that, going and do this, going and say that, going and do this, going and do that. You don't have to wear clothes to do that. You got that right. A demon in your head talking to you the whole time, telling you all that stuff. And then along this person goes because they don't know the Lord. They had not read the book. They had not read the Bible. They don't know. And they listen to it. And then we get all the crazy stuff we get on the news. Um, verse 31. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. 
And, and there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man, and he entered into, and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. Um, I didn't understand this, and I still I'm confused. In verse 31, it says they besought him that not not to command us to go out into the deep. Don't make us go out in the bottom of that lake. We don't want to go down there. And then, as soon as he put them in the pigs, the pigs take off and they run down there. And I'm thinking, they didn't want to go down there, so he suffered them. And you know, the, the, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, uh, they didn't think very highly of hogs. And these people raised hogs for a living, so they wouldn't have thought too much of them either. Uh, not Jesus, but the Jewish people. Uh, and so he said, well, they said, well, put us in the pigs. And he's like, well, okay, my people look down on them. That's a nasty animal in our eyes. And sure, you're, you're a devil, and that sounds like a pretty good place for you. And so he put them in there. Yeah, you can go over there and get in them pigs. You ain't going to hurt nobody over in them pigs. And uh, as soon as the pigs got the devil, The devil was making the man go against the will of God. All right? And the man lived like that. He kept right on keeping on, living out of the will of God. But when those devils entered into them hogs, and those hogs were smarter than me and everybody that's unsaved and, and until you get saved, and everybody that's not living for the, trying to live for the Lord, uh, those hogs knew that a devil had entered them and they'd rather take their own life and live like that than not to live for the Lord and not to live like he told them to live. They would rather run down in there and drown themselves in that lake. And how many of us would think that? I, I, would, I would rather lose my life if I'm going to live like this, live like a dog, like I know Jesus don't want me to, and I'd rather take my own life. I'm not going to do that. I think those hogs are more serious about it than, than I am and some others are sometimes. Uh, no, they wasn't going to do that. God made them to be hogs. They were going to be hogs, and they were going to be the best hogs they could be. Now these devils got into them and said, no, we want you to do this and do that and do this and do that. Everything but being a good hog. And they said, nope, not going to do it. Not for one second. So they just run down there and killed themselves. Now what happened to the devils then? I don't know. What happens to, as far as I know, they're fine. They get you killed, and then they roll right on. The only thing they're worried about is Jesus coming back, and he ain't come back yet. So the devils will be fine. But what happens to them, I don't know. Maybe they go back where they come from. I don't know. But them hogs wasn't going to live with them. And I've always heard hogs were smart animals. They're very smart intelligent. They can figure things out. And as soon as them old hogs figured out what had happened, I'm not going to stand for this one second. I'm not going to be like this. I'm not going to go against my God. Down they went. Not one, not two, all of them. The whole herd. Uh, so the hogs impressed me. Uh, verse 34, the people did not. The people in this story are just like we are today in most cases. Um, verse 34, 
When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. All right, it says in that verse, uh, verse 35, came to see Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, right where he was supposed to be, right where I want to be, exactly where I want to be. All right, now where was he at over in verse 27? It says a certain man, that could be any one of us, which had devils a long time, wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. That's where he was at. And then he met Jesus. Then he got Jesus. And Jesus fixed all that. It didn't say he, got, he met Jesus and he stayed the same. And, and, and that just applies to uh, to me it applies to salvation you, you, there's, there's going to be some kind of change after you meet Jesus something's going to happen unless you are living a righteous life brother he's going to get on you about something and, and more than likely, the way he did me, he didn't get on to me about everything all at one time. It was a little bit here, and a little bit there, and a little bit here, and a little bit there, and a little bit here, and a little bit there. Because I had a lot of devils a long time. So he just, all of a sudden, one of them start bothering you. Didn't ever used to bother you. You used to be okay with it. You used to be good. No problem. And then all of a sudden it ain't. Uh, my language still catches me. When I get mad. Man, I say things I wish I didn't say. And and I always I always say this. It 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 I'm better than I was. I'm a million times better than I was, but it still it still happens. It still happens. The difference is I've met Jesus, and now it bothers me. I'm thinking about who just heard what I said, why I shouldn't have said it. I know he heard it. Would I have said that in church? You ask yourself that sometimes. And, and if you can't say yes, then it makes you feel terrible. If it don't, I don't know you run into Jesus or not. Because so I know i got to come back in here Sunday morning because I won't. I, I got to. It makes me feel good. It gets me through the week. I need to check in. And I need to know he's still working and he's still here and everybody else is still with me. I ain't the only one out here, man. You look at the news, you think you're the only one. So I need I need God I got to come in check in with him and with y'all and and uh, um, w when you don't live up to to the standard you don't want to come in that's what gets so many people now, I promise you I don't wait till I come back in here to ask him Lord please forgive me for that. I don't wait to Sunday morning because I wouldn't remember what I did Monday. Some of y'all might. You might not. You, you might not do enough that you could remember all yours. I might not be able to remember all mine, so I have to do it when it happens and it bothers me. And that helps me not want to do it again. And and slowly but surely, he'll change you. You ain't got to change nothing. He changed me. He's, he's still changing me. I get a little better every day. I think. Uh, I pray I do. But uh, finishing off in verse 35, it says, and they were afraid. 
You'd think they'd be glad. This guy was terrorizing the town, man. He's like some of these guys you see on TV when they get shot, and then you, you, you hear their criminal history, and you're like, oh, my God, he was terrorizing the neighborhood, man. And, and nobody will say it, but half the people in that neighborhood are glad he's gone because he was terrorizing the people in that neighborhood. You think they wasn't scared of him? He's running around beating up people, robbing people, doing this, doing that, out in the open, don't care. And then all of a sudden he gets shot and he's Mr. Nice Guy. Well, not according to his, his sheet, man. I got a little sheet. He's got a sheet that thick. What does that tell me? Well, he's obviously doing a lot of things he ain't supposed to do. And who's he doing that to? The people right around him where he lives. Right around where he lives. And they'll never say it. People don't talk bad about people when they're gone. People don't talk bad about people when they're gone. Most people don't. None of them ever say it. I guarantee a lot of people are glad when people like that are gone, man. Whether he got shot, whether he's in jail, whether he moved away, they don't care. As long as he's not terrorizing them no more. Uh, you'd think they'd be glad, but they were scared. Verse 36. And they also, which saw it, told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. And he went up into a ship and returned back again. Uh, you know what they were scared of? That he was going to heal somebody else and they'd lose the rest of their pigs. You know what them pigs were? They were money. They were money. That would be like, I go to work this afternoon and I left something on yesterday and burned the building down. All the shirts are gone. My bosses have insurance. So they still wouldn't be happy. They still wouldn't be happy. There would be a loss there. Um, these people lost money. And because they lost money, they couldn't even see this guy sitting here. Brand new, shining like a new dollar, and 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 see the miracle in that. I see people in making all the time. I see some of the same ones over and over and over again. If I saw them clean cut, wearing a suit coat and tie, first I wouldn't recognize them. Number one. But if I did, I would know. I would automatically know. I just automatically, you got saved, didn't you? That would be my first guess. You got saved. That would be my first guess. If you're going to make a 180 like that, some of the people I see, they living like this other guy over here. They living in the bushes. You know how many people's living in the bushes in Macon? Can't count them. Can't count them. They're everywhere. If you got bushes in Bibb County, you got somebody camped out. It's terrible. It's worse than I ever thought I'd see in Macon, Georgia. It's bad. Uh, people living out of backpacks. People living at the bus stop. Seeking shelter at the bus stop. I've seen it in Macon. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to have somebody come here and start helping people that were in that situation? I'd hate if it was going to cost us a dollar we'd run him off. I'd, ha I'd hate to think that if it was going to cost us money, a, a little bit of money, a lot of money, if we had somebody who come here and heal those people, and get them off the streets and fix their lives and straighten them out that we wouldn't run him off. But we would. Money wouldn't let him stay. Stay in the business for the wrong thing. 
We are. Uh, uh, I heard a song on the radio. The name of it was uh, uh, Cheap Idols in Expensive Garbage. And it was basically saying that's all we are and that's all everything we buy is. It's a cheap idol and it, eventually it's a pile of trash. You can take the money you make and that determines how much trash you make. The more money you make, the more you're going to buy, the more into the trash. Most of what we buy goes into the trash now anyhow. You can buy two little sacks from Dollar General and go home and use it and fill up two big old garbage bags full of trash from the stuff that comes out of the boxes and the box and the wrapper and, the, and all the other stuff. And, and But Macon has more homeless people in it than I've ever seen in my life. Empty buildings everywhere. And what are we going to do? We're going to build an outdoor amphitheater to celebrate the homeless. We're going to turn the mall into a, what do they call it, a, a pickleball court. And instead of letting some folks go in there in the wintertime and get out of the weather, man, no, that costs lectures. We can't do that. We can't heat that big old place. Have people staying in there. Mm. I imagine we take the money. Uh, verse 38. Now, this is a guy that got it. Um, and I pray that this is who I'm, I'm turning into here, this guy right here, the guy that had the devils. Uh, verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Uh, uh, what a blessing. If there are changes in your life since you met Jesus to the good, then you ought to be happy about it and you ought to be willing to share that with somebody. And I think the best time is when uh, they need some positive changes. You can say, well, I can tell you what I did. I did this and, and he did this for me and he did this for me and he did this for me. And I really don't know how it happened, but he just did it. Uh, but he didn't want to stay there. He wanted to go. He wanted to go. If you, as a Christian, want to stay here, you need to read this more. This ain't where it's at. This is not your home. You are a pilgrim. We're rolling through, man. This is just, this ain't even a rest stop for you. Don't get comfortable down here. Don't be comfortable down here. Man, the day y'all have my service, hey, I done picked out some music. Y'all gonna be, y'all gonna be dancing and singing when y'all up in here. Cause that's what they're gonna be doing up there with me. Why y'all gonna be sitting down here all boo-hooing? I don't wanna hear it. Y'all don't be ruining my time. I don't wanna look down here and see all the people I care about all sad. Huh? Sad for what? For what? Are you sad I beat you like I was sad last Sunday Tommy beat me? Because I thought I was going to be there. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Come on in. Let me show you around. Come on. Let me show you this over here. Let me show you that. And that's going to be the other way. Tommy's going to say, hey, Max, come on in. Let me show you this. Let me show you that. Uh... And, and, and that's the, one of the biggest joys of being a Christian. If, if you don't think like that, you're, man, you're missing the boat. You're missing the boat. I was thinking yesterday a lot about it, and, and uh, again, uh, this morning, uh, you know, this week we got the news that, that Pastor JR has got medical issues, Brother Keith got medical issues, uh, we just had the service, Brother Tommy. Uh, Sister Angie, she's been struggling. 
medical issues, uh, and 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 the thought occurred to me: uh, the same God that saved me, the same God that sent His Son to save me, the same God that died on the cross for me. That same God allowed all these things to happen. And and who am I? His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Who am I to question one thing that I have no control over? I can't pick the day Brother Tom gets to go home. And something else about people going home, the day I go home, uh, my daughter might not let me go home if it was up to her. My wife might not let me go if it was up to her. I wouldn't let them go. It'll be hard. All right, God come down and say, okay, you decide when your family goes to heaven. You pick. My answer is, can we all go right now? Let's all go right now. Let's all go at one time. Let's get out of here. Let's get started. Me and my family, all at one time, let's go. To me, that's the right answer. Because I don't believe this is my home. The, 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 since I got saved, um, I used to fit in good, man, in this world. I could make my way. But uh, I don't belong here no more. There's, there's a lot more people that don't think like I think than there are that do. And they're hard to live with. The ones that don't think like we do, they're hard to live with. And I know that's what the Lord wants us to do. Is we're supposed to help them see the light like somebody helped us see the light. But they sure don't make it easy on you, do they? And, and then the Lord allowing things to happen to your church, to people in your church, man, your church family, when your church is just trying to help and do the right thing. Uh, but I get whoever said it was going to be easy, you know. I, it wasn't easy for uh, Luke. It wasn't easy for John. It wasn't easy for Paul. It wasn't easy for none of them. So why should it be easy for us? It certainly wasn't easy for Jesus. So why should it be easy for us? Uh, you could say, well, he knew, and he, he, he this and he that. You know, he was God, and yeah, that's all true, but he still did it. He still did it. Um... Uh, And uh, one more verse, and then maybe next week we'll finish with that, right? This has been a good one. Uh, verse 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And I underline that in my Bible, the part that says, when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him now all of us in this country ain't waiting for the Lord this morning all the people that are going to get up and go to church this morning ain't waiting for the Lord this morning and that's sad uh, not believing he's coming back you're missing out on another joy that's that joy of knowing you don't belong here you're missing out on another joy. Sure as the world is coming back, what else can fix this place? You tell me. I used to wonder, why would God have made all this? It's beautiful. It's just pretty. I don't know how you could have made one better. I couldn't think of one thing I'd change. And he's going to burn it all up. said the elements of melt. That's everything. So he's going to burn this place to a cinder. 
Um, but look at what. Imagine if you could add up all our sins and put them in a, uh, in a bottle. How many times a one of us has went against the will of God and he's sitting up there, got them angels just making hash marks, counting them. He said, I can't, I, I made them. He, he, he wouldn't do this, I would. I made them. I created them. I gave them the, the brain to understand. I, I gave them the word to teach them. I sent my son to die for them on the cross. I did this and I did that and I did this and I did that. And this is the what this is the thanks I get and just keep marking them sins, boy. And the more I mark, the matter I get. If you mean to tell me somebody was slighting you. And you could see them, but you did, you, they didn't know you was watching. And every time somebody got you, you had to sit there and mark it down. Whether they were stealing your money or cheating you somehow or another or running around with your spouse or, or whatever they doing that they ought not do, and you know about it, and they're just sitting there marking it. Now, how long do you think somebody's going to sit there and put up with that? Not long. Not long. But it says here when, when he returned back to, to this back to the other side of the lake, uh, the people gladly received him. For they were all waiting for him. If if you're not waiting for him, how are you gonna gladly receive him? He's gonna catch you like a thief in the night like he does everybody else. When it all happens, you're going to be scared and you're going to be wondering about your salvation is what you're going to be doing. That's what's going to happen because I know that would be what happened to me if I was backslid and off somewhere on a Saturday night where I wasn't supposed to be like I used to be. And all of a sudden, the trumpet goes off. Now, I don't question my salvation. Jesus said he'd save me. And I believe him, but if I'm out there going 110 miles an hour against him, the moment he comes back, and I hadn't had time to ask him, I'm still in, I'm still committing the acts of sin. And all of a sudden he comes back. I ain't got time to ask him now. It's too late. He's here. This is the, the, the time like the thief in the night. Here he is. And he just got me. He just got me. And if you don't think you'd sit there and question your salvation, I know I would. Lord, have mercy. I know your grace is something else, but I don't know if it can fix this. Just messed up, didn't I? Just messed up. Just threw everything away. One. So how do we know the next sin we commit, we're not going to drop dead the next hour? Hadn't had time for our conscience, the Holy Spirit, to start nagging at you and saying, hey, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said that. Uh, so we're sitting there and Next thing you know, you're not, you're not with us anymore. You're gone. Uh, everybody don't get the luxury of knowing that something's wrong with them. You know, none of us are guaranteed making it back to the house, even you, brother, and you're right there. We can see your house out the window. There's no guarantee you go make it up there. Not for none of us. But no one, um, uh, that the Lord has allowed these things. I got that from uh, the book of Job. And 
The only reason God allowed all that bad stuff to happen to Job is because he knew Job was strong enough to handle it. He knew Job was going to do the right thing, even though all that stuff. And I don't know anybody that's... I've known people that just took a lick and just year after year after year, but I don't know anybody that got it as bad as Job. All at one time. Everything except his life. Everything except his life. And he's sitting there all busted up with sores and miserable. Might as well have took that too. He wasn't good for nothing. Just sit there and be miserable. So took everything. God allowed it because he said he was a just and perfect man. And I was thinking, I pray that's what he thinks about our church. That's why he's allowed these things to happen. So all that kind of stuff is just, it's, 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 it's what Jared would call a faith shaker. It's to get people questioning. Well, where is he at now? Where is he at? Where was he at with Brother Tommy? Oh, well, he's up there showing Brother Tommy around his new mansion. That's where he's at now. <laughs> he ain't got time to be messing around down here now. He's busy up there building and doing. He's got things to do, things to show people because there's people getting up there all the time. Tommy wasn't the only one that got there that day. I think I heard one time it's about 20 million a day. Isn't, isn't that right? Something like that? That are born and die right in that neighborhood worldwide. And you think out of 7 billion, that's, that's probably about right. I think they say we're about to be 8 billion now. That's a lot of people. I can't count that high. I don't know. It'd take you a lifetime. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Well, men and women did one thing right, I guess. We have multiplied and we have pretty much filled up the place. But uh, after we do that, how much longer is he going to wait? And he said the gospel had to go from east to west. Well, we had to discover the new world and cross that ocean and cross the other ocean. And get the, oh, well, it's done got that. Now Asia's back to the Middle East. Well, now it's done went around. It's done went all the way around. So how much more is left? There's wars and rumors of war. About to not be able to buy a loaf of bread with what you make today if you work all day long. That's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. All those things Jesus talked about 2,000 years ago. Well, I tell you what, I don't know how he, <laughs> how he hit it so close, but he's hitting pretty much everything on the head what time we're living in now. Gas, $4 a gallon. I had a, a, a brother Pete said one time, he said, and, and you can tell this is an old, old video, he said that, uh, he said, yeah, he said, modern Christians, he, they think of gas, it's $2 a gallon, they made it into the tribulation. They missed the rapture. And, and that's about the truth. We've had it so easy. Uh, you know, over in Europe, they've been paying 6 and $7 a gallon for gas for years. For years. And it's... Uh, same thing's wrong with our, our government that's wrong with our country. We, we got away from, from the teachings in here. Let's go by these rules. And then if we need to add some more rules, we will. But let's just start with these right here, and let's see if we can't all get along together and, and see how these work. And that's basically how the country was founded. That's basically how we started, and it worked good for a long time. And then all of a sudden, because of a very, very, very loud few, everything had to change. The, they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease, well, y'all need to give me that buggy, because I'll push it. You know what else will make a squeak go away? You use something so many times that you wear that piece that's hitting off. You'll wear it down. Metal, it don't matter what it is, you just keep turning it. Eventually, it ain't going to squeak no more. You'll outlast it. 
but in, in this country, if one person hollers, oh, Sunday service uh, across the street from my house bothers me. Sometimes they sing a little loud. I'm trying to sleep. Well, there'd be folks saying, well, you can't start Sunday service until after 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Some people got to get their rest. And some dumb politician will hear it. And next thing you know, a bunch of dumb politicians will be voting for it. Next thing you know, they'll be telling us we can't start till 2 o'clock. And it's, it's because they put all that down. They don't care about this. And, and the problem in this country is going to hit when they go too far and they cross the line and people start standing up and saying, no, no, I believe in this right here. And what you're doing goes against this. You're going against my religion that I have a right to according to your laws and I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to have it. We're not going to have that here. Uh, that, and I wish that a uh, fellow friend of mine this the other day, he looked at me like I was crazy. I wish that America could bring back the citizens' committees. When somebody wasn't acting right, you go tell the citizen committee, and they go over there and tell him, hey, you better start acting right. Let's say he's a young man going out drinking, gambling, not paying his bills, church having to feed his family, take care of his youngins. They go over there and talk to him. Hey, you better tighten up. And if he didn't, they'd go back and talk to him again. The second time they would talk to him, they'd beat the tar out of him. Now, what's wrong with that? A man that won't take care of his wife and kids rather go out drinking, gambling, and he's told that that's not the way we live around here. We're not going to stand here and watch you treat your wife and kids like that. It ain't right. And he just rolls right on. You can take him to court for the next 25 years. Ain't nothing going to happen. But then that citizen committee went over there. The next Friday and Saturday night, he wasn't out drinking and gambling on Friday and Saturday night, spending his paycheck. Now, I know to some people it sounds barbaric, but if you go back through a little bit further in time, they used to stone people that broke the law. Now, I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about that. And the fact is that it worked. Uh, seems like they had a lot less mischief back then. A whole lot less. You know, somebody come talk to them. And what's wrong with standing up for you women and children? I've read that in my Bible more than one time. Widows, infants, orphans, elderly. If they're getting hurt and you don't say something, you're just as guilty as the one hurting them. You're just as guilty. And we'll, we'll close with that. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the examples that you've given us. And we just pray, Lord, that by reading them, you draw us closer to you to be more like you. Uh, we pray that you give Sister Johnny the message that each and every one of us needs this morning, Lord. Uh, a special touch this morning for our church, Lord. We've had a, a lot of ups and downs here lately, and we just pray that you'll strengthen and be with us and, and lift up East Juliet Baptist Church and everybody associated with it. Uh, we love you and we praise you, Lord, and we give you all the honor and the glory. And it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.